This illustration deals with expansion and splice plates in accordance with 392.44. The purpose of change was to provide a new section, and this new section has been added to clarify that expansion splice plates for cable trays are necessary to compensate for thermal expansion and contraction due to temperature variations, getting cold, getting hot, etc. Now, uh, the first thing I, I, I think is worth uh, looking and reviewing is the uh, call out at the very uh, top of the illustration pointing to the cable tray itself. And it says expansion uh, splice plates or cable trays should be re, uh, provided when necessary to compensate for thermal expansion uh, in accordance with 392.44. Uh, and you can uh, review the uh, expansion splice plates, 392.44, as you see the little arrow pointing to it that would connect there. For example, on the slope of Alaska, they have such a, an expansion due to the severe cold and then the warmness in some cases that they just take and uh, uh, they have a strap between that so it can expand, it can move uh, due to a little small earthquake or whatever without damaging uh, the tray. Now remember, this tray is no more really than a wall. It supports the uh, conductors, and we know we, we find that it's not a raceway in accordance with 392.2. Our raceways are outlined in 300.17 in the informational note. So we want to make sure we kind of keep that straight and we just went over how you classify your wiring methods. So if we review these conductors in the cable tray, we see our supports there, uh, right at the bottom there, conductors permitted, and then we have a cable tray with cables or conductors rated uh, 600 volts or less, and we'd go to 392.22a. Uh, we would look at 392.22b if you had single conductors uh, that were in a cable tray. So notice that that kind of uh, has a summary of what is really required. Now, uh, we'd also want to look at for securing and supporting rules you see, and again, you see, that's a dot 30, just like we've uh, uh, tried to get the whole uh, chapter 3 containing wiring methods to address support rules in dot 30. So here, 392.30B4, you're looking at dot 30 for your securing and your uh, support rules. And then, of course, the note 1 says cable ties shall be listed and identified to be used in a cable tray system to support conductors in accordance with 392.30B as in boy 4. Note 2 down right above the uh, caption, it says for uh, limitations of uh, single conductors and cables, see 392.10 for those rules. And then, of course, if you're looking for individual conductors, you'd see 392.22B when they're installed uh, uh, in cable trays for support. And then multiple conductor cables, you would see 392.22A. So when you're using uh, cable tray systems, you need to really review Article 392. Uh, and then, of course, you know 392.80, uh, when you derate for the type of cable, size of cables, and so forth that's in a cable tray, you'd look at 392.80. And cable tray installers, maintainers, you really uh, need to uh, review Article 392 uh, very carefully. Uh, cable trays are really, really abused, and we could spend uh, all day, eight hours, going over cable trays if you really did it in detail and then going through the maintenance requirements of NFPA 70B. So uh, this kind of concludes uh, what really took place in uh, this new uh, section 
uh, 392.44 with additional information given just for your benefit.